I was interested um, that longboarding was doing racing again. And um, I went up to Danger Bay to see what was going on. And I think that was the first place that I ran across Kevin. He was one of the racers and uh, everybody was busy, but Kevin found time to uh, say hello and strike up a conversation. So it gave me an opportunity to get to, to know Kevin and some of his friends. So um, I should say I was looking to get back into longboards if there was a place for us, because uh, we'd always been in longboards, but it had been really small. We never developed it like Sector 9 did or some of the other high-end companies did. Um, and we thought there was an opportunity to be of, of use there. So that was really our beginnings was in Canada. I can answer a different way if you want. Um, the uh, thing that got me here at Skate One, in my opinion, is uh, they were starting to do wheels. And they hadn't quite decided on the final name for the wheel brand. And uh, I was contacted by Michael Brook. Uh, Concrete Wave and he said, hey, uh, you know, you should probably talk to this guy and he put me in contact with Daryl and he was doing what would eventually become these wheels and he sent me a set of wheels that were this translucent white and they said on the side, experimental bombers and I thought, well, you know, some of the best wheels I ever rode were Powell Bull Bombers and I thought, this must be Powell and uh, I tested them and I had never ridden a wheel that was that fast. And though the slide was not quite perfect, I sensed something in the wheel, in the formula that was very different than anybody else, anybody else's that I tried. And that makes a lot of sense because, well, George is the only one that makes his own wheels. So of course it would be a unique feeling compared to the other wheels on the market. And I started to develop a relationship with um, Daryl and shortly thereafter, George and I had met and we struck up a conversation, as you said, at Danger Bay. And that was probably the first time that we had this going on and it was pretty easy. Worked out pretty good. It's interesting because, uh, because I've been in the industry so long, uh, 40 years, 41 this year, um, I've seen skateboarding come from, if you will, street and downhill. That's kind of what existed in the 70s. It was flatland and sidewalks and streets and ditches and downhill. And downhill was an inter integral part of skating. Um, I forget slalom, slalom. Um, that was all skateboarding. It was all good. It was all one in the 70s. And then as um, one particular aspect of the sport became predominant and additional manufacturers and skaters were attracted to the market. It became bigger and bigger. The focus uh, from the media and from the manufacturing companies all kind of naturally tended in one direction. And it's evolved over the years, but it tends to be skateboarding is this. And over the years, that's made people feel as though uh, if you're not doing this one aspect that everyone's focused on, you're not a real skateboarder. And we've always felt that was really stupid and didn't make sense for skateboarding or skateboarders. And we've kind of tried to resist that. So seeing longboarding become popular through downhill again, the, we didn't get really excited about longboard cruising at first. We make long boards. The Sector 9 is doing a better job of marketing them than we are, but it's not a big deal. But then when I, I saw racing and downhill, I went, oh, there's an opportunity for us to develop wheels, decks, trucks, better technology, because the downhill skaters are into tech much more than street skaters are. So uh, that's what really got me back into the serious technical end of longboarding and downhill. But what I see is that at this point in time, we're kind of coming back together. And kids that are longboarding and racing, many of them are also doing other parts of skating too. They're skating parks, 
they're skating, they're cruising, they're using it in, in other boards, they have a quiver, they don't just do one thing anymore. So that's the thing that really gets me excited and I think it is a contribution of longboarding to skateboarding as a whole. Because if skateboarding is to continue to be something that young people learn to do and evolve and can stay with it because they're having a fun and a good time, then you have to have a lot of ways that people can learn to skateboard that they relate to. And I call those ways of skateboarding on-ramps, like on-ramps to a freeway. So I think, I think of freestyle as an on-ramp. I think of longboarding as an on-ramp. I think of skating in your driveway or down your sidewalk as an on-ramp. Um, and um, street skating at its lowest levels is an on-ramp. Park skating at its lowest levels an on-ramp if you have elements for beginners so they can have fun getting involved in skating. And um, as an industry, we need to embrace all of those aspects of skateboarding, which is why we support freestyle skaters as well as longboard skaters, as well as vert skaters and street skaters, bowl skaters, and, and uh, have a girls team as well as a boys team. So. It's important that you know, we as an entity in skateboarding support as many of the places that people like to skate as possible because that's what makes skateboarding bigger because all of those people come in one way but they eventually cross pollinate into all the other ways and that makes skateboarding better and it makes it more collegial and more fun for everybody. So we don't need a bunch of haters going if you don't skate like me you're lame. That was the lamest part of skateboarding for a long time. Well, let's start with wheels. <clears throat> um, I've always striven for a couple of properties that I think make great wheels. <clears throat> One is how fast they roll, or rebound is how we measure that typically. And another is toughness and abrasion resistance. Um, those are two things that we always look at. Um, as we've gotten into uh, tailoring formulations for downhill sliding and racing, uh, we've kind of diverged and uh, it's, it's caused a lot of challenges for me as a formulator uh, because I, I put my best shot together and I give it to Kevin and he takes it out and goes, ah, terrible. <laughs> way too slippery, I almost killed myself. Or, uh, you know, it, it wore out too fast, or it wasn't very fast, or it was fast when it was hot, but it was not fast when it was cold. So it's really pushed our envelope of what we learn how to control and the targets that we have for our formulations. It's been really fun. And one of the things that's fallen out of downhill skating that's gonna to come to street skating is controlled slideability. We've always had um, very hard wheels that were very durable in our street tech formula that are for street skaters that are, allow you to slide as well as grip. There's kind of a fine balance there. But to do that in soft wheels has been much more difficult. And we're evolving new formulations that we call them soft slide formulas that enable us to make softer formulations slide like a hard formulation, but still wear really well. And our snake formulation is the first version of that in, in a 75A and an 85A that's hit the market, but we're really working on additional hardnesses for particular ty types of skating that we think are gonna be um, really altering the way people skate and what they skate with. As far as decks go, um, our goal with, with race boards, as I watched Kevin race, I went, you probably don't want a really heavy board. And we, we argued about that a little bit, but I went, if you have a light board, you're gonna get a better start. And it's gonna bounce less um, when you run into rough stuff. It'll float a little bit better. And so we've focused on making the boards as light as we can, as well as on how stiff as we can to eliminate twists so that your response is 
instantaneous. So uh, longboarding has really driven our technology in the last three or four years uh, enormously because it's one of the few areas where skating is evolving and highly technical products are um, accepted and sought after. Whereas in street skating, we've made a better board in our flight deck, but it's going to be a harder sell to get people to try it because the market is so set on seven ply maple popsicles that there's very little openness in people's mind to try something better. So it's going to be a much more difficult thing for us to do. But there's more street skaters than downhill skaters. So we have to try to do both. The surprises that I think I've had here are that were most interesting for me. Uh, recently, with, as George was saying, that we had started developing soft side formula. It's very, been very interesting for me to see how the physical data of the properties or the properties of these new formulas may match how I actually feel the wheel. So it's been really interesting to be on the hill and to have the information from George to say, well, this is how it did in data, uh, and then compare it with how it actually feels underfoot has been really fascinating for me. Because a lot of the times, as George mentioned, there are times when the data says it's phenomenal, and I'll tell you that I couldn't ride it down a hill. So it's been curious to see how in some places it matches, and in some places it doesn't. And it's interesting that uh, somebody who has skated long enough can feel something and say this is correct or this is not correct. And how that's driven the product forward has been great for me to see. It, it, it gives me uh, I guess some meaning in the, the skating that I do now. There are times when I've been developing soft side formulas where I've tested ends of the spectrum that don't feel right. Um, and then to see George change the formulas in a positive way and say, well, yeah, that's, that's right, we're going in the right direction. has been uh, kind of relieving in a way to say, okay, well, I guess there is something that matters in personal feel and that now seeing the success of the products that other people agree that we can find a medium or a blend between data and the physical feel of the wheel and that's optimal for skating. So it's been really cool to say that it's not all data and it's not all feel. There's, there's somewhere in between and you can find the perfect product by blending those results. And that's been a lot of fun. Hey, well, thanks for giving me some credit there for the data. But I, I, would, I would say that um, the final bottom line is definitely the feel. And it's our challenge to find tests to measure parts of the properties of the wheel that you're telling me you're feeling and that we're not testing for. So if rebound isn't telling us how it's rolling, really, or sliding, then we're not seeing the whole picture in our lab. So the collaboration helps us to develop better tests as well. Yeah, Byron's board was definitely our biggest challenge. The kicktail wasn't a problem, but the wheel wells and uh, getting the fiberglass and getting the shapes of the wheel wells uh, fared in so that we could glass them was challenging for us.